Well, good morning. Good morning. I'm Susie Sidwell. I lead the mission trips here at Cross Point Church along with my pal, Lynn Parker, who is the NMI president. She does every other part of missions that I don't like to do. Um, so I kind of take the one part that she would rather have someone else manage and I let her do everything else. And it's a great partnership. I adore her. I'm so glad we got to see her uh, on video today. She's um, She is a special woman for sure. Um, so first of all, I just want to say a couple thank yous. Thank you so much to all of you who have supported this trip financially. Um, we started planning this trip in 2019. We were supposed to go to Guatemala in 2020. Um, obviously, pandemic hit. Um, it rolled to 2021 and then changed to a domestic trip. So a lot, a lot of things um, changed up on us as we went. Um, but what didn't change is the support of this church. And so I want to thank every single person here who contributed over the last several years. Um, and most importantly, thank you so much to all of you who've been praying for us. Um, it really, the trip wouldn't have happened without the prayer support. We desperately needed it. There were a lot of interesting, uh, some unexpected <laughs> things that happened on this trip. And um, really, we would not have gotten through it without your prayer support. So thank you so much for that. Um, another thank you I have to say is I, my family got back from Kentucky about 36 hours ago. And we pulled this um, this morning presentation together pretty spontaneously, and Stephanie is my lifesaver. So I was still firing her slides uh, late last night. So a huge thank you to Stephanie for just pulling this together for me. Um, just couldn't have done it without you. Um, all right, well this morning I'm really excited to share about some of our experiences. So um, I'm kind of gonna present in a little bit of a different way than I normally would. So one of the assignments that I gave to our teens before we left is that um, I gave each of them randomly, actually, they, they kind of drew, um, drew by lot, lottery, I guess, a verse. Um, and then they had to take that verse and work it into a devotional along, um, along the trip. So it kind of was a working devotional. Well, when I was preparing for this morning, it, I realized, gosh, the verses that the kids used really tied perfectly to our experiences on the trip. And so I'm kind of going to weave some of those um, devotional verses in as I talk about uh, really what God did and the projects that we worked on while we were in Kentucky. So probably the best verse uh, to tie into the entire trip overall is what should, is still on the screen. So 1 Peter 4.11, and this was from Bella's devotional. It was our first devotional that we had. And it pretty much sums up our week, and it says, If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Um, you may or may not know, but our team of 17 was cut almost in half. Um, I found out the night before the trip started, so Friday night, um, that we had lost um, six to COVID and two additional people who had um, through other just medical situations had dropped off a little bit earlier. So we dropped from 17 to nine, um, right before the trip was about to start. Um, that was on the heels of one of the most turbulent weeks I personally have ever had. Um, and I literally just kind of sat in our hotel room, my family was already in Kentucky and just thought, all right, God, you're just gonna have to do um, what you love to do, which is big things through small numbers. Um, and to say the least, God, definitely did that. Um, and so I just were like, okay, we'll see what happens. So we can actually go to the next slide. So these three adult team members of mine, I, I can't even tell you how grateful I am for Keith, Lynn, and Phyllis. So um, there were basically four adults, five younger people. Um, when I say that these three literally fulfilled their God's calling, by using their abilities to the best of their ability and glorifying God through that. I, I just can't even emphasize that enough. Um, we ultimately had to do the work of like two or three people. Um, and so I just kind of want to share about what we did, but also highlight how faithful these three were. So Phyllis, Phyllis, I, I'm everybody on my team, the kids constantly, even still are like, we love Phyllis. She, in fact, they laughed because the car in front of us would look back. I was driving and little Phyllis is sitting next to me and they said that it was so cute. They're like, all they could see was little Phyllis's head. Um, Phyllis was just a wonderful addition to our team. And um, so we basically had to run a sports camp. Um, I did reach out to Encuentro the night before and I'm like, we are gonna need some help. So they did partner us up, us up with another team, but between us and this other team, we very spontaneously had to pull together a sports camp, um, lunch each day, and as it turns out, crafts, which 
I am not a great craft puller togetherer. I'm just not. Um, but shockingly, I had someone on my team who was like a craft expert. And I, the first day, I'm sitting in the car and I'm just chatting with Phyllis and I'm like, Phyllis, like what, like what special abilities do you have? Like what do you, what do you think that God is asking you to do? And she so sweetly goes, I'm really good at crafts. And I was like, Phyllis, do you even understand? Like crafts are the one thing that we need. We didn't even really know we needed that because we thought we were just running sports, but it was so hot that we realized the first day the kids were coming in and just hanging out with us. And all we had, we had scavenged together some coloring pages. And I'm like, okay, we gotta come up with something a little more creative. And this adorable woman stayed up till like 11.30 at night pulling together craft projects that were so thoughtful and so um, like tangible for the kids and then tied to Lynn's message. And I mean, it was just a godsend. And when I say that she allowed God to use the ability which he has supplied to her and then glorify him, I mean that. It's just in every sense of that verse. Um, second is Lynn. Okay, so here's the other thing. So then they asked me, they're like, okay, we have this other team that's a little bigger, lots of teens. They're going to kind of run the sports piece. Can you do the lunch? Okay. If anybody in this room knows me, you know, cooking is not my thing. I'm like, what? I'm like, are you kidding me? I got to put lunch together for however many kids every day. And of course, you know, I'm like, whatever, of course, of course I have to pull together lunch. And so who pops on the scene is Lynn. And she's like, I would love to prepare lunch for all the kids every day. And I'm like, oh my gosh, thank God. Thank God for Lynn. Um, so on top of, not only did she, like, she and I worked together kind of to, I mean, we had to go grocery shopping and we had to prepare a lunch for everybody. So she like took that and ran with it and, um, and pulled everything together for these like pretty basic lunches, but lunches nonetheless. Um, I mean, I'm telling you, if it was up to me, it'd be peanut butter and jelly every day and that's it pretty much. Um, everybody would be as skinny as my family by the end of that trip. Um, so she pulled that all together. And then on top of that, um, we, we felt like, okay, nobody's like, there was like no pre like preconceived structure to this. Um, and we thought, okay, this is, this sports camp is going to be a huge waste if we don't pull together some kind of like message each day. But when I, we literally didn't have any of this planned, even by Sunday and this sports camp was starting up on Monday. And so thank God, Lynn basically was like, I have two great ideas. And then we had a girl from the other team step up and then I had already, I had brought an existing message that I had. So like literally right away, um, God gave us four just messages that really flowed so beautifully um, through the week. And we were able to tie to this craft that Phyllis had stayed up preparing. And um, it was just a really, um, a really beautiful moment where I got to see God just like do really cool things um, as, through all of our abilities really. And just the willingness to use those abilities. Last, I cannot not mention my husband. He is not in this picture. Um, so the third piece of what we were doing um, is every afternoon we were doing some sort of construction project, which really we, again, didn't have any like advance notice on. And so we were just showing up and I was just so like all over the place trying to pull all these details together. Like, Keith literally just stepped in and was like, I'll, I'll just take it and do it. And he did. And it was, again, such a wonderful use of his natural ability. So the first day, um, we actually helped work in a local elementary school. Um, it, in that case, it was an interesting project because actually the school looked, I would say, as good as half of our schools. Um, but what they were saying is that without the teams coming in, they would just be like totally de devastated because their funding for these local schools is based on um, like a full-time equivalent. So it's the kids who actually show up and because these areas are so impoverished, um, a lot of times kids just are absent all the time. And so their funding tends to be lower. And so what they were saying is when their funding is lower, the first thing to go would be like janitorial staff or landscaping staff and things like that. So um, it really didn't look too bad, but we were able to go in and do just a bunch of paint touch up. Um, actually, Keith ran a whole team of youth in one room that had not been cleaned or like updated in 20 years. And it was, they would have to elaborate on that. I actually wasn't in, in that room, but I can tell you like the walls were like weirdly black. I, we don't even know if it was mold. They were spraying, I think they were scrubbing it for mold. Um, anybody on my team want to throw out what it was? Anybody? Mold. mold. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was gross. It was really gross. And it was a really complex room to paint because it had tons and tons of shelving. I think it was like a technology room. 
Um, and they spent all day. That was a team of like 10 or 12 in there. I mean, they had a blast to be honest. It was like, it's kind of where I wanted to be. It was like the super fun room. Uh, but I got kicked out because apparently when I walked in, I distracted everybody from the task at hand. So I was told I wasn't allowed to be in the fun room, um, but they renovated that. And so those, they, we were able to do some of those kinds of unique projects there. Um, that was literally just a one day thing. Um, the remainder of the days we actually spent at this courthouse. So the Martin County Courthouse is about 100 years old. Um, it, this is just the facade of it. It's actually not in use. It's been pretty much completely gutted. Um, it was just, it had just, over all the years, had just been really, really worn down. There's an old jail in there. Um, but it was stopped, it stopped being used in the 80s, and it's just a wreck. Um, well, what they really want to do as a, as a county is renovate it so that they can have it be um, a source of income for the county because Martin County is so, so poor. Um, so they're working with a local ministry and then bringing in groups like us to kind of do these big projects. Um, one of the things that's pretty neat that they want to do is they're trying to put in an industrial kitchen um, because they want the, far the local farmers to be able to come in and can their fruits and vegetables. And apparently they are going to be able to get um, some kind of certification through the um, USDA, I guess, and be able to sell them back to the schools. So they, they're working on big projects like that. They're gonna to try to renovate it in a way so that they can um, rent it out for weddings and events and things like that. And so pretty much every willing body that is willing to go work on that courthouse, they pull in. And so we had an opportunity to do that. Um, and that turned out to just be a really neat afternoon project for us. Um, it, was a, it was hard work. Um, some wasp stings uh, came from like the vines we were pulling down off of, off of the, um, the building and it was very dirty and um, pretty pretty grimy, uh, but the team did an amazing job over there. And so again, just just back to my verse, uh, if any one ministers, let him do it to the, with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. And, and really just as a whole, everybody rose to that occasion. Um, my question for you this morning though, is that what ability do you have that God is asking you to use for his glory? And I think that's a really important thing for us to ask ourselves because every single person in this room has an ability, a God-given ability, a God-given talent that he wants to use for his glory. And we don't have to go to the mission field to use that. In fact, he doesn't want us to go to the mission field only to use it. And so I just want to leave you with that question this morning is, what is that talent? What is that skill? What is that ability that God has divinely given to you personally that he wants to use to further his kingdom? Small or big, it doesn't matter. Some are flashy, some are not. Um, but if you're good at crafts, step up and prepare crafts. If you're good at preparing lunch, step up and, and prepare lunch for some kids. Whatever it is, it's unique to you and God wants to use that to further his kingdom. Okay, so next slide. Okay, I will possibly cry on these stories. Um, two of the most touching stories to me um, from the week came from these two pictures. <coughs> okay, so these two girls in the picture, so Bella is obviously mine on the left, uh, but this little girl here next is named Angel. She was born deaf. She has a cochlear implant, so she has some level of hearing, but she does not speak, um, but she does read lips, and she is just has the most beautiful, you can't see it in the picture, but the most beautiful, crystal clear blue eyes. Um, her sister is Ashley in the red. Ashley um, is special needs. I don't know exactly what the situation is. She's very chatty, um, but definitely has some kind of learning disability, um, but very, both girls, super, super friendly. Um, we got to know them right away. Their parents actually run the facility that we were running the sports camp out of. Uh, so we kind of got to know them. They were, they were around a lot. Um, but it wasn't until the second day that I noticed an interesting dynamic was happening around these girls. So um, day two, so Monday was kind of just our day that we got up and running with the lunches. Um, day two on Tuesday, when all the kids came in for lunch, Ashley and Angel were the first two in and they took a seat at the, the, the first table. Every child that came in from sports camp after that, every single one, Ashley, the one in the red, would say, sit with us, sit with us. And Angel would sit there expectantly and smile, and 
every child ignored them, like every child, and went to a different table, like a farther table. And the whole table had start, was starting to fill in. They were still sitting alone. Still, every child that came through, they would ask the child to sit with them, and every child ignored them, and ignored them. Like, I, not even a, no, I'm gonna go sit with my friends, like, ignored them. And it was getting to the point where they were starting to pull chairs from their table. And I had already tried to get involved, and I was trying to get the kids, like, I'm like, hey, no, come sit at this table. And they were ignoring me, too. I mean, they were just not having it. And for the first time in those couple days that we'd been there, I just, I noticed how um, just neglected and overlooked and shunned these two sisters were. And I, it broke my heart. And I'm like, God, I don't know what to do. Like, are these, I mean, these kids, aside from me just yanking kids and throwing them at this table, like, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do. And I looked around the room and I saw my daughter, Bella. And God was like, that one, go grab that one. And I went over to Bella and I'm like, Bella, she was just chatting with somebody and no, none of our team was sitting down yet. And I said, hey, Bella, I'll explain later, but I just need you to go sit next to those two girls. And she's like, what? And I was like, I'll explain later. Just, can you just go sit? And she's like, okay. And so she went and she sat down right next to Ashley. And so it was now Angel, Ashley, and Bella and the entire tone of that room changed. And it, but there was just something about this tall, beautiful outsider that had come in and chose to sit there that all of a sudden made those girls just not look so outcast, not look so strange. And the, every kid that came in after that point sat at that first table and surrounded those girls. And I was just, I didn't even in the moment totally get where that was all gonna go. I was just really grateful in that moment that um, through obedience, Bella had just done what I asked and it had changed the tone. Well, it came and it became more distinct really what was happening later that day. So they, um, the kids finished lunch and then they all went out and listened to a, a beautiful message by Lynn about how important our words are um, and how kind words really can transform can transform um, another person. So they went out and listened to the message, and that was a day where we had a lot of the kids coming back in to do the craft, which was amazing that Phyllis had prepared till 11.30 at night because we had plenty of crafts. And so once again, um, at this time it was like Ashley sat, sat in one place and then Angel and then Bella, or something like that, I don't know. Angel and Bella were next to each other this time. And I didn't notice at first, but I noticed about 15 minutes in that every single thing that Bella would do to color that Angel would look over her shoulder. So Angel's the one that is deaf. I look over her shoulder and do exactly the same thing. Like exactly. And Bella wasn't even noticing. Bella was just like, you know, being Bella, just cute and bubbly and um, just coloring her thing. And literally like every single step, she'd look over and she'd mimic it. Look over and mimic it. And to the point, so then I commented to one of the other leaders who then made a joke at Bella and said, Bella, are you copying Angel? And the look of delight on Angel's face that someone had noticed that they looked similar. I mean, it was one of the first times I had seen that little girl just fully come to life and had the biggest smile. And then, so you can see how similar they are. Now, Bella had to color her beam because we didn't have any more of these others, but like they're pretty, pretty much identical. Even she tried to match the shading and everything. Um, which seems like, when you look at it, you're like, this seems like a logical coloring, but let me tell you, every other kid did not color it like this. Like, there were a million colors all over these, so she, like, did her best. So anyway, so then um, Phyllis and Lynn had this great idea that based on the lesson that we should um, trade, trade um, pictures and write kind words on it. And so Bella then took the time to fill her, and so she basically was like, I made this one, so Bella said, well, and then she filled the entire surrounding with just words of kindness and love and hope um, and then gave it to Angel, okay? So again, in the moment, I'm like, that was just a beautiful gesture. But I don't think we fully understood how beautiful that gesture was until the next day when Angel ran up to Bella with this homemade card, whole, full of her own just words of gratitude and kindness. And she spent so much time on this and she was beaming that she had this beautiful new friend who had made her feel so special. 
And once again, I felt like that verse came to life where let, if anyone ministers, let him do it with the ability with, with which God supplies. And in that moment of just kindness, both these girls' hearts were transformed and they had created this amazing bond. And it was just really, really a wonderful moment. So let's jump to this picture. So now I have a Cody story. Um, so one of the reasons that these girls are so ostracized in this community is they have a pretty severe um, lice infestation, um, like bad. And Ashley, um, it's so bad, you can actually see the, see the bugs crawling on her hair. Um, it's, it was so tragic. I mean, we've, we've dealt with lice in the past, so it was heartbreaking. Well, it's well known, so it's part of the reason that the, the kids avoid it. Well, we had been told about this because obviously, I, I mean, we have a ton of hair. And so people had kind of warned us and said, hey, just heads up, be, have your girls maybe start to wear their hair up. Okay, so I had kind of told the team and generically like what was happening and like, um, let's braid our hair, just keep it up. Not like we don't need to avoid anybody, but just definitely don't want hair like down and loose. Um, well, day three, so Wednesday, um, kind of inadvertently, okay, um, Cody, in all of his like fun-loving humor, decided to be funny and try to scare Bella and pretending was pretending to be a lice. And he's like, I'm a lice, I'm a lice, I'm gonna get you, Bella. Okay, so he was just being funny. What he didn't realize is that this whole family was right behind him. And I, I happened to see it play out, so I just pounced on him immediately, and I'm like, Cody, stop talking! And he kind of looked at me with shock, and I'm like, stop talking. I'm like, <laughs> and he was like, whoa, whoa, and I was like, enough. Anyway, it, it ended, it ended. And he then figured out what had happened and felt horrible, horrible. He was so broken by it. He in no way was meaning to hurt anybody's feelings. He just didn't know. He didn't know they were there and he was just being funny. Um, and he came to me later and was just so, so remorseful. And he's like, what? I don't know what to do. Should I apologize or should I talk to them or what should I do? And I said, honestly, Cody, I don't think that they heard. Um, I said, but, so I don't think that we should necessarily bring it up and make it a big deal because I, I think we caught it in time. I said, but I would recommend that you just look for a way to make it right. And, and that was actually really the end of the conversation. I mean, he had apologized profusely. I knew he felt terrible. And so really for my part, I was like, okay, you know, I think, I think we're okay. So Thursday is the last day of sports camp. You, if anybody knows Cody Williams, you know, the boy loves his sports. And when um, I came, when we came in to do the craft, so um, Phyllis had prepared another amazing craft. Um, I came in and I looked around and I'm like, Cody Williams is in here doing a craft? And I was like, okay, that just never happens. That never happens. And it dawned on me, Cody had decided that day that he was gonna find a way to make Ashley feel special. And he had sat down with her and he spent probably an hour doing the craft side by side with her and he he let her teach him how to do the craft so he'd be like how do you do that and then she would show him and she would giggle and laugh I mean look at the look on her face she was beyond elated that this boy was giving her all of this attention and he then asked her how to spell how to spell her name and so we helped him write it out and he wrote straight across his craft he wrote ashley jesus loves you and he gave it to her and that little girl spent the rest of the afternoon talking about cody to everybody she met and it was just such a beautiful moment of seeing how god can just transform a heart if we're willing to let our own heart be transformed Cody's devotional verse was from Ezekiel 1119. It said, then I will give them one heart and I will put a new spirit within them and take the stony heart out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. And really that's what missions is all about is heart transformation in all of us, those being served, but also those of us who are doing the serving. And in Cody's moment of repentance and regret, his heart was so soft that he let God just direct him in, in this way 
that really touched this little girl in, in a way that I don't think anybody had ever really taken the time to do. And so my question for all of you is, where, where is God trying to soften your heart? I mean, the last couple years have been hard, and I am the first to admit, God, my heart's been hardened in a lot of ways. Um, 2020, 2021, they've been rough. And God has done a work on me in the last few weeks in softening my own heart. And I have to believe that there are people in here who he's trying to soften your heart too. And one thing that I can promise you is that a soft heart has the ability to soften the heart of another as well. And so bring that before God and say, God, I know my heart is hard in this way and I'm asking you to soften it because I wanna have an impact on the heart of another. So my last slide and last um, couple stories and then I will be wrapping up. Um, <laughs> that's my kid. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love it so much. Um, I'm so sorry, Faith. I'm so sorry, <laughs> wherever you are. This is literally the only picture I had to go with this. So, um, okay. So the final, the final verse, this was actually canons. It's actually one of my favorite um, two verses in all of scripture. It's from 1 Kings 19, 11, and 12. And it says, then he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And I just, I love, I love that. And I think that really is how God speaks to us, is in that still small voice. And the reason I have these two pictures up is that Canon and Faith were both very, very faithful to hearing God's still small voice on this trip. So Canon is showing us his uh, new puppet friend, Droopy, also created by Phyllis very late one night. Um, this was part of the skit where they were talking about using kind words. And so Droopy was sad because someone's feelings had been hurt by sad words. And, um, and what I love about, about Cannon is that he just jumped right in. So none of us had a whole lot of prep time on anything. And he was just so willing to just jump in and be like, sure, I'll be your sock puppet and like hang out on the floor. And he actually did that twice for us. So I pulled him in on another message too. And he was so happy to do that. Um, Anytime I needed someone to like help serve or clean up, I mean, he was just always really willing to step in and just serve. And I feel like um, he really was trying to be sensitive to that still small voice. Um, Faith. <laughs> so our very last day, we had this opportunity to go out to Maytown, which is actually where the Chauncey family lived and worked for like nine years, right? Eight, nine years? Guys, Chauncey? 12. 12, 12 years. 12 years, and when I say that the Chauncey <laughs> fingerprint is all over Maytown, I like that is an understatement. We walked in and we're like, it's like Beth Chauncey artwork everywhere we go. <laughs> well, since they've left, um, I, let's just say it's definitely been neglected out there. There's a huge amount of need. Um, it was supposed to be our free day and we just opted to go out there because we knew that they needed some extra support and assistance. And I, it was a really great opportunity for us to really be able to see how the Chaunceys um, had kind of gotten gotten their start and the impact they'd had in this community. Well, the, what they asked of us is that we actually help clean up an apartment. It had been loaned out to somebody to be like a kind of a caretaker and he had just trashed it. They said it was the ultimate bachelor pad. Um, he smoked the whole time, um, never cleaned it the whole time he was there. It was, it was gross. Um, and they basically were like, we are so sorry, but it's like our most urgent need. Can you guys come in and do this? And so we're like, sure, okay. Um, so the reason I have this picture of Faith is that when we were all kind of picking our, like, what to do, I mean, there were some jobs that were easier than others, and Faith decided she would clean the refrigerator. <laughs> and I, and, I mean, it was so gross, like, she would love to tell you how gross it is. So the reason this picture makes me laugh is because she, you can see how bad it was. You all know how adorable my daughter is. She does not look like that in real life. And um, but she just was like, okay, I'm in. And what I what I love about that she that she did is that she just followed through. 
and she definitely didn't love, love it. She spent a good hour, and I mean, she had to take things in and outside. They were so, so dirty. She was like hosing stuff off and scrubbing, and, um, and she just did the work, you know, in that same vein of like listening to the still small voice. You know, it would be so much easier for us all just to be like, ah, I'm not gonna do this, somebody, it's somebody else's problem. Um, but she didn't, you know, she stuck with it. And so thank you, Faith, for letting me show this picture of you. Everybody knows you're really cute. Um, and so just really in conclusion of like my stories of today, I guess my question would be, what is the still small voice saying to you? The reality is we don't need to go to the mission field to hear God's voice. And I do think sometimes it is easier to hear him on the mission field because we've just taken away the distractions and our, just our normal routine. But the reality is God does speak in a still small voice. And he's always willing to speak, but we have to allow the space for that. And we have to be obedient to that. And sometimes God asks us to do things that are uncomfortable or dirty or embarrassing. Um, but if God's asking, then we have a responsibility to honor what the creator of this universe is asking of us and to glorify him to the best of our ability. And so if it's been a long time since you've heard that still small voice, then I encourage you today, this afternoon, just go home and ask God how to carve out the space that you need to hear God's still small voice. Because the impact he wants to have through every single one of us is immense. He wants to use our gifts, our skills, our abilities. He wants to soften our hearts. He wants to speak to us so that he can use us for his glory. So last but not least, I did not mention one team member, and that is Maddie. Um, Maddie was our ninth member. She got a very unique assignment. Um, for me, I didn't give her the same assignment as the kids. Um, I asked her to prepare her testimony. And I told her in advance, I said, I want you to prepare it, and I want you to modify as you go. And, and then be ready to share when the moment is right. Um, she has not shared it yet but she will be sharing it here in about 30 seconds. Um, Maddie went into this trip with the most perfect level of openness. Every single morning, she would get up and say, what did you say, Maddie? Oh, God, what do you want to do today? Oftentimes, she and I were the only two up really early, and she would bounce up with this little cute face of expectancy and say, Miss Susie, do you, did God give you a message for me this morning? <laughs> and sometimes he did, and then sometimes he didn't. And I'd be like, I'm sorry, Maddie, I didn't get a message today. But um, she was so open to letting God work in and through her that God did an amazing transformation in this girl. You're gonna hear her story here now. Um, I love this girl so much. I am so excited about everything God is gonna do in her future, and it, it was a, a blessing and an honor to have her part of our team. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so I'm gonna kick on the high energy caffeine charge, Maddie, in just a second here. Good morning, Crosspoint! It is an honor and a privilege to be standing here at the front of this church. Um, I've been going to this church for maybe seven or eight years. Um, I started when I was about this big. I'd walk to church with my sister. And um, if you don't know me, I work with Refuge Youth Ministries under Mr. Dan Chauncey, um, just working with the teens and getting to know God a little bit better every day. So that is a fantastic ministry. Um, so another thing you might not know about me is if you take a right turn out of this church parking lot, and then you take another right onto Hannah Road, my parents' house is about a mile down on the right. So um, we grew up very, very, very close to this church. Um, another thing you may not know about me is that I am obsessed with TikTok. It's unhealthy, and 
If you don't know what TikTok is, it's a series of short videos that you can watch and you have your for you page that's been designed for you and you can scroll through and they are either the most academically heavy videos you've ever seen in your life or they have no substance at all, but it doesn't make a difference because you won't remember any of them after you close out the app. Um, so here's an example of one of my favorite TikToks. The Stephanie. Um, I appreciate that. So you might be thinking to yourself, Maddie, was that just an excuse to show us a cute dog in church? Yes, it was. Um, but there is some relation. So a couple months ago, there was a trend on TikTok called My Mosaic, where people would talk about people in their lives that they love and the habits that they've picked up by being around them. So for instance, My Mosaic would sound like I shoot an imaginary handgun up to God after I pray because I once saw Fernando Rodney, former Rays pitcher, shoot an arrow up to God after he pitched a winning game. Um, I frequently say it's hot as I'll get out because my dad would always say that after a long day of work. And I refuse to eat ramen noodles from the microwave because my best friend from elementary school only liked them on stovetop. So I like to think that our personal testimonies are our own mosaics of because we don't write our own stories, the hands of the people that we love and God's hands are what form our own personal mosaics. And today, Pastor Harv has asked me to talk about my, and Miss Susie, I'm sorry, about my own personal mosaic or my testimony. And before I begin with sermons and messages that have glued together my testimony, um, I'd like to mention a few honorable pieces of some of the people in this church. Um, I remember Miss Susie Sidwell laying her hands over me and praying while I sobbed at Kingdom Youth Conference. I remember Mr. Dan Chauncey opening the door to his home and welcoming me, welcoming me into his family um, when I felt like I didn't have one. I'm amazed by Miss Beth Chauncey who has coached me through times when I refuse to give myself a break. And every time I see Mr. Kyle Frisco, I remember the time that he gave me a hat from the conference that I had to miss because of work. And I will never forget the humble nature of Miss Mindy and the sincerity of every single prayer that she sends up. All these people and a lot of people that I didn't mention show me the outline of the kind of person that I want to be. My testimonial mosaic also includes some bright pieces broken off of sermons and messages I have heard and read. And gluing all of these pieces together are clay. Now, I'd like to think that the clay is peace and love and hope and everything you would see on those signs that you get from Home Goods. They're like, yes. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, but no, the clay was formed from the dust of my past. So Miss Lisa, Lisa, I'm sorry, Miss Lisa Turkhurst in her book, It's Not Supposed to Be This Way, notes that sometimes the trials and challenges of this world make us feel like we've been pummeled into dust. But she also reminds us that the good news is that dust is God's favorite ingredient in creating new man. Genesis 2-7 reads, Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. The nature of this world has pummeled me into dust a few times, but God has taken the dust of my past and added water and created a new step in my faith over and over and over again. My mom is recovering from addiction. Add water to the dust and make clay. I feel loved for pure intentions for the first time in my life, add water to the dust and make clay. And I have never been so in touch with my faith, add living water to the dust and make clay. So now that I have the clay and I have the pieces of my mosaic, how do I put them all together? How am I going to achieve the shape that God sees for my life, and what direction does God want me to lay each piece in? Mr. Sean from Encuentro Missions preached on day two in Inez, Kentucky, and he explained that many of our relationships in this world are transactional, 
But our relationship with Jesus needs to be transformational. That was a holy slap in the face. For a long time, I thought that I could glue the pieces of my mosaic together using a transactional relationship with Jesus. But here's the kicker. A good deed is not a coupon for my sin. Joining the military doesn't offer a discount on the kingdom of heaven, and donating to a charity does not make me tax-exempt from God's expectations. Praying to Jesus only in desperation for change is like approaching a customer service desk and saying, I am not satisfied with your product. Who has the authority to say to the king that his grace and mercy is not enough to satisfy our worldly desires? Who has the authority to approach the king and say that the breastplate of righteousness and the shoes of peace he has given us are uncomfortable? The difference between having a transactional relationship with Jesus and a transformational relationship with Jesus is to surrender with gratitude. So after we listened to the sermon with Mr. Sean from Encuentro Missions, I surrendered. I said, God, I'm done. I'm done trying to control my own life, and I surrender to you. You can have everything I know and everything you do not know and everything I do not know, and you can plan my life the way that you want to. Lay my pieces together the way that you want to and the way that you plan to. So toward the end of our time in Inez, Kentucky, Encuentro Missions asked a couple of us from the entire congregation of the mission to stand up and say something that God had spoken to us or done in us during that week, and I had no idea what I was going to say. So sometimes God plants a seed in our heart and lets the idea bounce around in our lungs and form in our throat and if we just had the nerve to surrender our brain and take away all of the nervousness and the anxiety and open our mouth, then he would e explain it and speak it into worldly existence. So without really thinking, I just opened my mouth and said, I am called to ministry. So I wrote this on Wednesday night. Um, and I didn't finish it because I didn't really know where it was going to go. But I am really excited to announce that as of Friday, I have been accepted into an internship that was laid in my lap on this mission trip so I can go serve the underprivileged in Indianapolis, Indiana. So in that, I just would like each one of us to think about what opportunities does God have waiting for us if we would just surrender? Thank you so much. Stay right here. I had the privilege this week to write a email of recommendation for Maddie, and it truly is a joy as a church to recommend you for ministry. We've watched you the past seven or eight years grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ, and I believe God has great things for you. We affirm your call into the ministry this morning. Can we just shout, yay God? One, two, three, yay God. Stay right here. And can we shout, yay God, for the good missions trip? Satan didn't want it to happen. Do you guys see that? And I don't know if you caught this, but Manny, uh, Ma uh, Maddie was planning on going with the Chaunceys, isn't that correct? And so I don't know if you know the story, but the Chaunceys didn't end up going and tell us that story. So the Chaunceys could not go, and I was going to write up with the Vances as well, but they also tested positive. So I said, okay, I'll drive. And I left. <laughs> so God orchestrated this mission trip so that he could call Maddie into the ministry. And that is awesome. That is awesome. So we want to pray for you. So in closing, let's do this. I know it's a little charismatic, but would you just stretch your hand out towards this wonderful young lady and... Maddie, we are just, come on up here, Susie. We are 
affirming your call. We as a church have been praying for the last two years that God would call people into the ministry. I have Holy Ghost goosebumps all over me right now. I know that God called you, Maddie. I know that there are three or four other young ladies in this church. The Holy Spirit has been speaking to you and nudging you towards ministry. We want you to know we also affirm your call today. God is calling people into the ministry. And if he calls you, say yes. Say yes, it's not the easiest life, but it's the best life when you're in the center of the will of God. Maddie, we believe you're in the center of the will of God. We, we want to pray for you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for how you orchestrated this missions trip. Thank you for what Susie shared today. Thank you for each member of our team giving their best to you. Thank you for the lives that are changed for time and eternity. We give you praise. We thank you, Lord, for how your hand is upon Maddie. We affirm her in the ministry today. We pray that you would lead her into all truth in the way that's everlasting. We pray that you would fan into flame the gift of God that is within her. I pray, Lord, that you would use her in every way. I pray that you would prepare every need and provide every need that she has. Lord, those moments where she feels like giving up, I pray that she would know if the Lord has called you to it, he will see you through it. Help her to know today that she has an anointing that comes from you because you are the one who calls and you are the one who is faithful. And so, Lord, we bless Maddie in the name of Jesus. We affirm her in the ministry and we send her out in the name of Jesus. I pray that she would know that our prayers are with her. It is a privilege to be able to send her in the name of Jesus and to be a part, a small part of the great ministry that you have for her. And so we bless her in your name. Use her mightily for the building of your kingdom. We pray this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. She leaves Saturday, church. And so if you want to send a text, if you want to get a gift card, let's affirm Maddie in the ministry. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday.